The increasing use of electronic systems on the modern battlefield necessarily incorporates electronic warfare as an integral part of the overall battle plan. The electronic warfare squadron is the means of conducting offensive electronic warfare in support of the division's operations. The role of the division's electronic warfare squadron is to gain information on the enemy by exploiting his electronic emissions to disrupt the enemy's use of the electromagnetic spectrum and provide advice on defense EW. Electronic warfare includes electronic warfare support measures such as search, intercept, direction finding and analysis, and active electronic countermeasures such as jamming and deception. It also includes advice on electronic counter countermeasures which are used to protect the division's electronic systems. The squadron is capable of searching for and detecting all enemy communications and radar transmissions within the division commander's area of interest. By intercepting and analyzing critical high frequency and very high frequency radio nets and ultra high frequency tactical air and radio relay transmissions, the squadron can provide vital combat information threat warnings, tactical signal intelligence, and can piece together the enemy's electronic order of battle. By locating enemy combat net radio communications and radio relay emitters, and by identifying and locating his ground radars, the squadron is able to develop a complete layout of key enemy headquarters and communication nodes. With the use of high-powered jammers, the squadron also provides an important attack option by being able to jam and deceive selected enemy command, fire control, and forward air control communications, as well as air defense and counter-bombardment radars. The Electronic Warfare Squadron is organizationally integral to the Division Headquarters and Signal Regiment, but functions as a separate entity. It includes a headquarters, an operations troop, two identical communication troops, a radar troop, and a combat service support troop. The squadron is equipped with a mix of soft-skinned and armored vehicles. As a general rule, forward-sighted elements such as jammers and direction-finding stations are armored. Within the squadron, there are communications, intelligence, and combat service support personnel totaling almost 400 all ranks. The electronic warfare process starts with electronic warfare support measures. With these, information from enemy communications and radar emitters is collected by search and intercept activities. The information is then recorded and collated by analysts who produce combat information for the headquarters staff. If more information is desired, intercept and direction finding detachments are steered onto specific targets, or it may be decided to attack them with artillery, or by airstrikes, or electronically using jamming or deception. During operations, elements of the squadron are decentralized throughout the division area and, where possible, are located with other units for protection against enemy attack. Specifically, an electronic warfare coordination center is located at each of the division main and alternate headquarters. An electronic warfare liaison officer is located at each subordinate brigade headquarters. The main and alternate electronic warfare operations centers are located near the rear boundary of the forward brigades. When required, forward operations centers are sited well forward in the brigade area, thus extending the forward communications links of the EWOCs. Two communications direction finding baselines of five stations each are deployed across the division's front. Similarly, a radar baseline of four stations is spread across the division area. And finally, the squadron has four jammer pairs also spread across the division area. The electronic warfare coordination centers with the main and alternate division headquarters form the division's EW staff. They coordinate all EW activities with higher and adjacent formations and through the liaison officers organize EW support to the brigades. Essentially, the EWCC integrates the combat capability of the squadron into the division commander's operational plan and directs the positioning of the division's EW resources. 
The electronic warfare liaison officers coordinate all EW activities, including terrain clearance and other requirements within the brigade areas. They pass on threat warnings, combat information, and technical signal intelligence that directly affects the brigade in battle. The main and alternate electronic warfare operations centers implement orders and direction received from the EWCC and control, task, and deploy EW detachments. The main EWOC consists of some 15 to 20 soft-skinned and armored vehicles. It functions as the squadron headquarters, controls all squadron operations, and is the heart of all the division's EW activity. Here, the analysts collate raw communications and non-communications data, providing steerage for the squadron's elements operating in the forward area, providing tactical reports, and piecing together the enemy's electronic order of battle. Here also, the bulk of the communications search and intercept activity is carried out. Steered by the analysts, the operators search for and intercept all voice and telegraphic sources on all tactical frequencies. The EWOC keeps the EWCC current on ESM results, mission success, and detachment deployments. It also coordinates the passage of technical data to higher and flanking EW organizations. Forward operations centers would be deployed when normal communications distances become overextended. These would consist of two or three armored vehicles. The FOCs are the focal point for the forward, command and control, resupply and maintenance of their assigned detachments. They provide communications to and steerage for the direction finders and the jammers. They also support the EWOCs with a limited intercept capability. The detachments that form a communications or radar direction finding baseline are controlled from a master station normally sighted with the FOC. The radar direction finding baseline also functions in an intercept mode, providing its own steerage and bulk information for analysis at the EWOC. The DF detachments are armored and deployed on high ground close to the forward edge of the battle area. They tend to remain in location for an extended period. Also located close to the FIBA are the ground-based communication and radar jammers where they gain the best advantage from their high power output. When electronically attacking a target, jammer detachments work in pairs, alternately engaging and then moving. They depend upon concealment, armored protection and frequent moves for survival. The squadron's A echelon is normally located with the administrative squadron of the division headquarters and signal regiment. Here, the routine administration required by the squadron is completed, as well as second line maintenance on its specialized electronic warfare equipment. As the division's principal electronic warfare staff officer, the officer commanding the Electronic Warfare Squadron provides advice on the most effective use of the Division's electronic warfare resources and on any special threat to its command and control systems. To the FMC Division, commencing at 281800 hours, May 85. Maintain one combat team on 30 minutes notice to move by ground or air as part of the Divisional Reserve. Operational control of the division's EW resources is maintained through command channels. This involves planning guidance, target priorities, tasking and movement, all of which are implemented through the EWCC. Technical control of EW squadron is exercised by the core EW regiment. This ensures that the EW database is constantly updated, that systems complement one another, and that there is maximum electronic coverage of the entire battlefield. Technical control of the squadron's elements is exercised through the EWOCs. Well, Mr. As you're aware, the, the commander's mission, of course, is to defend there, and the problem that falls out from that, and I've discussed it with him, is uh, you know, how will the enemy affect his mission of defending? Uh, will he attack? If so, when, where, and in what strength? 
For tactical EW to be effective, it must be closely integrated with the overall operational plan and clear priorities must be given by the G2 and G3 staffs to the EWCC. Tactical signal intelligence is fed to the Intelligence Collection and Analysis Center, which in turn provides the EWCC with collateral intelligence to assist the EW effort. Once electronic search measures have identified and located an enemy emitter, certain actions may occur automatically, such as the jamming of active forward air communications links or fire direction nets. Normally, a decision is required on whether to neutralize, destroy, or exploit the target for more information. This decision is made by G3 in conjunction with all other interested staffs and re-evaluated in accordance with the changing tactical situation. We're going to have a hard time stopping them. The sooner you can define that and we can get a handle on this, the sooner we'll be able to posture ourselves for one or either. I don't think we can deal with both. Okay. First of all, G3 Ops, John, I want you to prepare a warning order to send to the units. Planning and targeting for ECM attack is part of the overall fire plan and is done in close conjunction with the Division Fire Planning and Airspace Control staffs. As ECM can be highly disruptive to our own electronic systems, careful planning and tight control is essential for all jamming activities. It is estimated that since 60 to 70 percent of all battlefield intelligence is gained through EW, care must be taken to ensure valuable combat information is not lost by inadvertent jamming. The EWCC provides the all-important link in coordinating ESM and ECM activities with the general staff. It does this by preparing EW estimates and plans, coordinating all EW activities, issuing EW orders and instructions, and coordinating the squadron's administrative needs. It also provides advice on the formulation of the division ECCM policy. The G3 staff exercises overall control of EW activities and, with input from the EWCC, selects targets for jamming and deception, coordinates terrain clearance for the EW detachments, approves restricted frequency lists, and keeps the EWCC current on the tactical situation. Based on the division commander's priority intelligence and information requirements, the G2 staff provide the ESM target priorities and coordinate the electronic aspects of deception activities. The ICAC further processes the tactical signal intelligence and collected combat information provided by the EWCC to give the commander accurate and timely intelligence. The commander, Division Signals, retains the overall responsibility for EW plans and operations. At the working level, the Signal and EW staff interface in the provision of information on frequencies and call signs, reporting of meekening, intrusion, jamming and interference, and coordination of the restricted frequency list. Close coordination between the Division Artillery staff and the EWCC is a prerequisite for EW support to the Division Fire Support Coordination Center. This includes the passage of target acquisition data provided by intercept and direction finding, coordinating the deployment locations and utilization of remotely piloted vehicles, the employment of artillery delivered expendable jammers, and for the provision of survey information for the sighting of the squadron's detachments. Close coordination between the air and EW staffs is also required for programs aimed at the suppression of enemy air defenses. Here, the EW squadron can provide tactical information to assist the mission planning activities of the Airspace Coordination Center and on the communications and radar ECM support that can be provided in aid of the ongoing SEAD program. The engineer staff provides going and obstacle information for detachment deployment and helps to coordinate the intermix of expendable jammers with remotely delivered mines. During defense operations, ESM elements are sighted well forward with ESM taking on a greater importance than ECM. Intercept and direction finding concentrate on providing information on enemy leading elements, groupings, locations, axes of advance, engineering resources and nuclear and chemical delivery and air defense systems. Information on the location and movement of enemy forces in depth 
is achieved through monitoring traffic control and second echelon command nets, noting traffic pattern changes and following the movement of radio detachments. As the enemy closes up on the FIBA, ECM concentrates on neutralizing enemy surveillance, target acquisition, and fire control systems, and on disrupting nets established for obstacle crossing operations. Throughout the covering force battle, ESM resources continue to provide information for jamming and deception. It also attempts to determine enemy concentrations and the direction and timing of the main attack. During the battle, ESM elements continuously zero in on enemy jamming and deception emitters so that they may be pinpointed and destroyed. As the covering force withdraws, the jamming of enemy reconnaissance nets may be required to assist in achieving a clean break or to delay and confuse the enemy in the passage of information concerning our main defensive positions. During the main defensive battle, ECM will be used primarily to attack leading enemy command and control nets, causing confusion and delay. At the same time, ESM must continue to locate and identify the main enemy effort and to provide the required ECM steerage. During the counterattack stage, jamming is utilized to isolate the communications of the penetration force and delay their capability to react to an attack. At this point, the enemy is radio dependent and very vulnerable to jamming. ESM continues to locate and track the movement of the follow-up echelons and concentrates on determining enemy reactions. Electronic deception operations are aimed at diverting enemy forces and are conducted as part of the overall theater effort. When compared to other forms of surveillance, EW is the only system that will provide a 24-hour, all-weather, passive intelligence gathering capability out to the edge of the division area of interest. Jamming and deception can be most effective when used discreetly at the critical stage of the battle, thereby providing a vital multiplier of combat power. 